Good morning, Saturday, January 30th, uh, 2021. And today we're going to talk about the simplicity of the major scale. So in my excitement about uh, the, uh, the major tetrachord of the first half of the major scale, you want to practice them both together, but I kind of didn't go into a what I think is a decent explanation of solfeggio. Solfeggio, solfege, solfa, solfio, it's got a bunch of different names. It's Italian, I believe, and who cares, but what it does is it gives us syllables, one syllable names, if you will, for the degrees of the major scale. There's two types of solfeggio. There's uh, the movable dough and the non-movable dough. And uh, we're dealing with the movable dough because we want to be able to discuss the major scale and its function uh, along with its structure using single syllables. You know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I made mention of um, the sound of music, uh, not to be confused <laughs> with Mary Poppins, but um, I was a kid, what can I tell you? Um, but it's so important to be able to discuss the major scale. So if you were having a conversation and you were discussing the major scale, you could say that the major triad in the key of C, the, you know, the, the chord based on the first note of the major scale, based on Do, or any chord functioning as the one chord in any key based on Do, is spelled Do, Mi, So. Or if you wanted to get complicated with it, do, mi, so, ti, re, fa, la, do. And that's all 13. Uh, or 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Um, not to get caught up in the way that harmony works and minor ninth problems and things that sound not as good as they could. Um, the solfege is really important. Just know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And be able to say it backwards. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, <laughs> do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, and, and sing them up and down. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, so, do, and that kind of puts your ear where it needs to go. Again, the singing is not a vocal lesson or a performance. It's really to tie your ear in. And then, of course, do it with your instrument. The solfeggio is so important for that reason. And as we start to look at how keys change, with one note, for example, and this is one of many ways that they can change. If we take that C major scale, we can look at the way it's structured and then take that structure and apply it to F. And that discipline, that whole, whole half, whole, whole, whole half will introduce the first B flat. And it's solely based on the structure, but that's coming up. Back to the solfeggio part. When we look at the C major scale and change it to the F major scale without changing any of the notes, essentially a mode of the F major scale, we have from C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C is the C major scale. The F major scale, starting from C and ending on C, is C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat in C. There's a slight structure change. But if we look at it from the solfeggio area, F is still Do, C is still Do in each respective key. So it makes talking about the major scale and its structure very, very simple. How to hear it. Very, very simple. Solfeggio. We're only looking at the C major scale, not the C major scale, the major scale at this point. So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do is the major scale in solfeggio. When we start to change intervals within a scale, which means it has momentary key changes, for example, T becomes T if the B becomes B flat. Okay? So becomes C if we have to raise that fifth for any reason. Why doesn't matter right now, but we will have to raise that for various reasons. Mi becomes me as we flat that third. So a, mi a minor third in solfege is do to me. A major third in solfege is do to me. But don't sweat any of that. Just get do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do in your head and backwards. Do, ti, so, la, fa, mi, re, do. It's still confusing for me. I've been doing it for years. 
but you need to get that. So solfeggio is super important for that reason. It's going to really help explain and define the characteristics of the major scale and then changes you make in it. Okay, uh, It's going to really put a handle on why B flat becomes B double flat. When you look at it in solfege, it's a function. So you don't have multiple letters in the same discussion. Um, not to get into this squirrely thing too deep, but it is coming up, is the notion of low, note letter names. I heard someone one time, I've heard many people do this, and I've done it myself, but I quit. I don't look at B sharp as C, because the only reason B sharp is going to exist is if it's necessary to raise the B so we can keep that letter name the same. That's one example. Another place that B-sharp is going to come into play is in the key of B-sharp, okay? Or the key of C-sharp. It doesn't have a B uh, in it. It has a B-sharp. So B-sharp does exist. E-sharp does exist, okay? So these are things we'll get into later. But as far as solfege goes, because of the function of the way the major scale works and its simplicity, it's important to understand the solfege so you don't have to struggle or wrestle with the letter names and those and harmonics like uh, B sharp and E sharp. They do exist. Don't think they don't. They do. They just don't come up commonly and for good reason, which we'll cover. Any questions on solfeggio? Uh, it's really simple. You could leave comments. You could educate me on things that I might have missed. It's good that everybody sees that stuff. But in the grand scheme of things, um, you want to get your solfeggio happening. And with that, Leave comments in the comments section. Be sure that you uh, hit the subscribe button. You ding the ring -a ling ding bell. So the next video that comes out, you get notified. And it really does help the channel. And I'm really trying to grow this channel so we can get this information out there. And with that, we'll see you on the next round.